That's bait. What did I just watch? Is it April Fool's Day? Are we in punked right now? Like collectively as a society? Okay, so this movie is coming out, The American Society of Magical Negroes, and it is the most main character, poor me thing I have ever witnessed. And I recently watched many hours of red pill content, and this is worse. Where, where do we start? Because there's just so much happening here. It seems like they're trying to tackle a trope and also get publicity by being purposely offensive, but are failing badly on all fronts. Let's start with the premise. The American Society of Magical Negroes is attempting to play on the magical Negro trope in movies where a black character comes out of nowhere to help the protagonist with some down-home folksy wisdom and sometimes a little magic. You know, I find the more garbage in the can the better it feels to dump it all out. Except this movie says they exist to keep white people happy because the happier they are, the safer we are. There's even a white tears meter to show how close to lashing out we are. Let's set aside the blatant racism for a second. We'll, we'll come back to it. But what really struck me when I was watching this was how far up your own ass you must be to think that you are the only group who has to make everyone else feel comfortable or else they're gonna judge you. Trying to make people around you comfortable isn't a punishment. You aren't being put upon. That's called being an adult, and we're all doing it, and usually doing it poorly. It would make me feel more comfortable if you hit the like button. I probably made it magically glow just now. Everyone does this. White people have been doing this clumsily for a long time, and we will continue to do it badly. Some of the cringiest stuff I've ever said has been to or around black people because I'm trying to let them know I'm not like those white people. I'm a cool white person. Hey, you're safe around me, don't worry. Do you need proof? Here's a pop culture fact that I keep in my pocket at all times so you know I get it. It's from 2005. We'll say stuff like, you know what? We should just all say our favorite thing. I'll go first. I love spices on my, especially like paprika. Mustard is underrated. You guys agree? You know what my least favorite sauce is? Mayonnaise. It's gr it's gross, right? I like hip hop too. So, LeBron's the the king. Am I am I right? Hey, who, hootie who? It's because I don't front. Know what I mean, don't do that. Anybody up to play a rousing game of spades or bones? You know what? This is controversial. I'm just gonna say it. I don't agree with the way that Nelson Mandela was treated. Get down, boogie. What? Sorry, I didn't hear what you said. I was listening to some of my favorite music. What's going on? Ask any black person. They'll have stories about cringy white people trying to be relevant. Black folks, I, I assure you, it's coming from a good place. And women are doing it too. The entire speech at the end of the Barbie movie, there was a whole list of things they feel like they have to do in a man's world. Do you know how many women are out there right now pretending to think Pickle Rick is funny or feigning interest in some dude's fantasy sports picks? She's just trying her best. And men are doing it too. Ladies, we want you to know we do not condone what Harvey Weinstein did. In fact, we're not even gonna look at you. We're gonna look all around, so that way you know for a fact that we aren't interested in ogling you and objectifying you. As a matter of fact, we might avoid you entirely, so as not to offend or harass in any way, even accidentally, you're welcome. We're trying to be respectful. Every single one of us is worried that we are bothering the people around us, or we have heard the complaints about the way our race or our gender tends to behave, and we're trying to publicly overcompensate. So yes, the premise of this movie is extremely self-centered. From the title, what it seems like they're doing is trying to play on the magical Negro trope and subvert it. As with most subversions these days, it looks like it's falling on its face. First, let's get back to the racism. David Allen Greer tells Justice Smith, What's the most dangerous animal on the planet? Sure. White people, when they feel uncomfortable. First, white people are the most dangerous in the world is the most American attitude I can imagine. I'll tell you what though, America is super duper racist. It's, it's so racist in this country that the only group you can comfortably and publicly call dangerous animals is, 
It's white people, but let's move on. Mentor guy shows a white cop and there is a floating barometer labeled white tears. I despise the opposing side tears line. It sounds like something you might say as an edgy teenager. Former libertarian chair Nick Sarwark tried this after the 2016 election when we absolutely killed it at the polls. And by this, I mean we got a full 2% of the popular vote. For us, that was like climbing Mount Everest, which Gary Johnson did. Not sure if everyone knows that. Sarwark said the two main parties, your tears are delicious and your parties will die. He said that on national television. I nearly sent my membership card back. He might as well have told the Republican and Democrats, up your butt and around the corner. <laughs> Honestly, that would have been better. That's a classic burn. I get the feeling they suck some of these lines in there to get attention because the rest of this movie looks so basic and boring that they needed something to get us talking. So the white tears and the dangerous white animal thing is just a way to get some PR. If you want to play a fun game, go look for commenters who clearly didn't get this far in the video and just think I'm another mad white guy and that somehow proves that the movie is correct. Give them a cookie emoji, they obviously want one. That's the real game here. Say something offensive, then call it white fragility when it's called out as offensive. They want the publicity from the edgy premise, but they also want the movie to be critic proof. It's all a pretty cheap ploy. Greer then explains that it's their job to make white people comfortable because uncomfortable white people precedes bad things for black people. So keeping them happy keeps black people safe. Shocking stuff, truly. But the really dumb part here is that this seems to be a full misunderstanding of the magical Negro trope. If you've never heard of this, well, chances are, one, it's just not a popular trope, and there are very few real examples of it, but Spike Lee coined the term in 2001 because he is a race baiter, and his entire worldview prioritizes race in the first, second, and third places. If you look it up, there are many magical minority tropes, apparently. Basically, if a protagonist is a white man and some helpful side character is not, it gets put under the magical minority trope, and it's a bad thing. When a random side character is a, mag a magical wise plot device, but is also a white man, we, we don't seem to care. Plot device characters are just bad writing, but it's only a trope if it can be seen as racist. Kind of like how a crime is somehow a worse crime if it's a hate crime. But this trope is a black side character with no real backstory or motivation who just kind of shows up out of nowhere, often seems to have some little magical plot pushing powers, and is usually a down home folksy guy who dispenses out folksy wisdom. Sometimes things ain't really broken. It's the way we treat them that needs to be fixed. The prime example that is usually given is Bagger Vance. You could maybe include Chubbs Peterson from Happy Gilmore. Uh, people often cite John Coffey from The Green Mile. I find that example weird though, because John has a backstory and the whole thing is about racism in the 1930s and his unfair treatment under the law. Hitch with Will Smith gets cited, which is stupid. He was the main character. And he was a businessman, not magical. Here is a whole list of supposed examples on Wikipedia. Decades old examples are relevant, like Song of the South, uh, Lilies of the Field. But then from the 90s forward, the definition seems to just be side character who is helpful but black, which feels broad. So we've got Justice Smith and mentor guy tells him it's hard to watch him try to walk through a room of white people. He clearly feels their discomfort. I, I hate the other people tears tough guy thing and I also hate main character syndrome so much. If you are a black person or any person that feels this way, that your very presence makes white people uncomfortable, I want you to go watch some Sigma male content to see just how stupid that attitude sounds when you see it from an outside perspective. People find Sigma males to be intimidating because of how mysterious they are along with the fact that they don't really engage in communication with others that much. Just as Stephen Hawking says, quiet people have the loudest minds. Please stop believing that you are so special it scares people. In general, Assume that people think about you roughly 99 times less than you assume. And that goes for all of you watching. People are way too busy with their own life to think about you, I promise. And I mean that in an encouraging way. It really should be a relief. 
Also, if they wanted to sell us on a black character making white people uncomfortable, they should have gone with someone other than Justice Smith. He always plays the awkward guy with no self-confidence. The name needs a little updating, maybe like magical black people, or I guess that doesn't have the same word. He is the light-skinned black version of Jay Baruchel. Yeah, we, we were getting sort of hot and nasty. Uh... Justice Smith is a white person's favorite kind of black person because then they can claim they know one. If you are attempting to sell this victim narrative, you need to get a different actor, someone intimidating like Juman Hunsu. So it looks like Justice is gonna be inducted into this American Society of Magical Negroes and presumably go find some Matt Damon out in the world and be his bagger Vance. If they went that way with it, I think it could be funny. Like if we saw him help many people over the years, but he eventually gets tired of being a side character and wants his own happy ending, that could be a good story. Maybe if it like starred Ryan Reynolds and he wanted to be a real kid. Oh shit, no. Okay, all right, this has already been done and without the overt racist overtones. Instead, it seems he will be assigned to this white guy and is tasked with keeping him happy, but falls for a girl and accidentally makes the white guy interested in her as well. Now he has a dilemma because he wants the girl, but the white guy is the main character and he has to follow the rules of the society. So after the trailer's initial racist spectacle, we discover that it's actually a basic love triangle rom-com. We just slathered racism all over the top because edgy. And this movie isn't just racist toward white people. <laughs> oh no, who does justice fall for? This girl. Hey, where are the white women at? Yep. It's definitely not a stereotype that black guys love to go after white girls. But Greg, she's not white. Uh, right, sorry. Anne Lee Bogan is Asian, and she just happens to be the whitest looking Asian girl you've ever seen. Where do black people hang out? At the barber shop. But all of this is okay, because the writer-director looks like this. That's Kobe Levy. The casting of Justice Smith has become suspicious. Kind of feels like a self-insert. Honestly though, Kobe is why I feel that I can make this video and these jokes at all. Hell, I'm darker than this guy and my hair is curlier. So kind of feel like I have a pass. Listen, I'm not like a regular white person. I'm a cool white person. The real issue with this movie is not that it continues to add to the demand for racism even though there isn't enough supply. The biggest issue is that it continues the sad tradition of taking autonomy from black people. The saddest thing for black folks, in America anyway, is that they are never allowed to be anything but black. You guys are required to be black first in all situations, and race hustlers like Spike Lee will never allow anything different. Now don't misunderstand me, I am not an advocate for color blindness, I think that's very naive, but I want to reiterate a point that I've made previously. We talk a lot about white privilege. What is it? Is it really an advantage? Is it just a lack of disadvantage? I can tell you with certainty that one of the biggest privileges that white people have is that we don't tell each other from young childhood that there is a nebulous enemy out there, some systemic thing waiting to pounce. Aside from the vanilla rom-com, this movie is really just a black writer telling other black people that oh, those darn white people will get dangerous if you don't appease them constantly. The Barbie movie was women telling other women that the ever-present patriarchy is out to get them. This is why I'm so hard on the red pill children. All they do is feed guys cope, telling them that modern women are the reason their life sucks so much. There's no hope, fellas. The world is out to hold you back. All of these messages are internal and they will give you a victim complex. I absolutely love this story about Andre Brower. One of his kids didn't like that he was playing a gay police captain on Brooklyn Nine-Nine. He said, no, I'm playing a police captain who is gay. And he explained, one of those is gonna be the butt of the joke. One is eventually wearing hot pants and singing YMCA on camera in some embarrassing way. And the other is going to be a man with plenty of dimension who happens to be gay. And for me, that distinction is critical. It's key. That is the issue with how our stories are being told right now. When we race swap or gender swap, or even when we tell black or women stories, it's not a story about a woman. It's not a character who is black. It's a woman's story. It's a black character. 
and the writing is awful because of it. And when people that look like me say, this writing is awful, the standard flimsy defense is, you're racist, you're sexist. And you know what's so funny? These people that say that are self-snitching. What it means is that they tie race or sex so closely to the core of a character that it's impossible to separate them. So to them, disliking, say, Captain Marvel is seen as sexist because all they see is a woman instead of a whole person. Anyway, let me know what you think about this trailer. I'll link it if you want to watch the whole thing. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.